Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California invites you to Let George Do It. In just a moment, we'll begin tonight's adventure of George Valentine. If you've had trouble starting your car on frosty mornings, remember this. You get all eight high-performance qualities in every gallon of Chevron Supreme gasoline. Yes, there's starting, warm-up, acceleration, vapor lock prevention, anti-knock, mileage, power, and area blending. So for smoother, all-around top performance, fill up with Chevron Supreme gasoline at standard stations or independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Stolen Goods, another adventure of George Valentine. George, darling, what's happened to you today? And just when I need you so badly. You're always in the office by 10 o'clock. I waited as long as I dared, even called you at home, but there wasn't any answer. When you do come in, no matter what time it is... Get over to my apartment as soon as you can. Don't call me. I can't tell you about it on the phone. But please, darling, hurry. This is one one time time that that I I need help. And don't spare the horses. Brooksy needs help. Probably wants me to fix a broken zipper. Okay, Angel, at your service. Morning, Brooksy. George, you finally got here. Yeah, okay, let's see the problem. I'll fix it for you. Well, it isn't quite as easy as that, darling. No? What do you mean? George, you know I went shopping at Coverly Saturday. Yeah, missed you, too. Oh, please be serious. The things I bought came this morning. Aha, uh-huh. good service. The things I bought and something else. Yeah, what? I went over the packages, and there was one I knew I didn't buy. It wasn't the right size or shape, so I opened it to see. Wrong size? Send it back. It, it was... This, George. Oh. Diamond and emerald necklace. Or a reasonable facsimile thereof. Uh, probably a trinket you bought for Aunt Minnie or somebody and forgot about. I didn't buy it, darling. And it isn't a reasonable facsimile. It's real. Oh? <laughs> you sure could fool me. How do you know? That it's real? Because there was a note wrapped up with it. Here, read it. Uh, Miss Brooks, the little item enclosed is a bit too hot for me to handle just at the moment, so I'm taking the liberty of smuggling it in with the purchases you're having delivered. I happen to remember that you're assistant to George Valentine, so I know I can trust you. Just hide it away somewhere, and I'll come to your address and pick it up on Monday. And, of course, there'll be a fee. Hmm. No signature. No, no signature. Don't you see, George? Somebody stole this thing, found a way to get it in with my packages, and now I'm in possession of stolen goods. Oh, now, wait a minute, Angel. Suppose the police are following this, whoever it is, and they trace him here. Oh, look, Brooksy, stop dramatizing. Can't you see? Somebody's just playing a gag on you. This thing isn't real. It's it's only paste. It's a practical joke. I don't think so. I still think it's real. Uh-uh. Want me to prove I'm right? Well, certainly, okay, but... Okay, okay. Moe's Pawn Shop is just around the corner. I'll go down and have him give me an appraisal. That suit you? Well... Yes. Give me them gems, lady. I'll have Mo look at them, and then let's go back to the office and get to work, huh? Yes, sir. Good morning. Is there something I... Georgie Valentine. How are you, my friend? Fine, Mo. Fine. I stopped in to get a little expert advice. Of course, of course. Always glad to be of service to you, Georgie. And no expense, you understand? Yeah, I understand. So, like they say on the radio, what's your problem? Well, it's like this, pal. You know Miss Brooks. Sure, sure. Well, uh, I'm thinking of getting her a necklace, a a, a gift for a special occasion. Ah, so that's it. 
And I can help you, Georgie. It so happens I have several very fine pieces in right now. And I could give you a special price. Oh, not so fast, old boy. I know just what I want. I have a sample in my pocket. Uh, well, I can have one made up for you and save you some money. Here, this is what I have in mind. Aha, uh-huh. very pretty, Georgie. Now, how much would it cost me to have one like that made up in diamonds and emeralds? <laughs> you kid me, my friend. I apologize, of course, but you could not afford such a necklace, Georgie. No? Well, uh... Just roughly, how much? Mm, I don't know. With real diamonds and real emeralds, I would say about... Well, Mm. what's the matter? Wait, wait, wait. I'll put my glass on these stones. You understand, I might be wrong, Georgie, but... Mm -hmm. Ooh, huh? Look, Mo, what's the gag? You've seen pace before. You don't need a glass to look at it. Georgie, you're a good boy. I don't know where you got this necklace. And I'm not asking any questions. What? What do you mean by that? My friend, for this, I would give you today $15,000. And I could sell it for twenty. dollars you, you could? If I had the $15,000, which I ain't. You could leave it on insign- consignment with me, Georgie. When I sell it, I'll just take 10%. Now, let me get this straight, Mo. You mean this thing is real? Now, Georgie, you know it's real. Just making fun with me. Where did you get it? Well, it's a... You see, well, a friend of mine bought it, and he was afraid he'd been gypped. Ah, that's it. I knew you were fooling. How much did you pay for it? Uh, 20000 I think. Uh-huh. That would be right. You could tell your friend it was not cheated. Yeah. Thanks, Mo. Be seeing you. Hey, Georgie, what's the hurry? I gotta get back with this necklace. My friend will be in to pick it up any minute. Hey, Brooksy, Mo says that... What in the dickens? Hey, Brooksy. Brooksy! Good Lord. Hello. Hello, give me Lieutenant... Oh, Johnson? That's right. Valentine Johnson. Yeah, yeah, I thought I recognized the voice. Now, look, I'm up in Brooksy's apartment. Johnson, something's happened to her. I left her here just a few minutes ago. When I came back, the whole place had been turned upside down. She's gone. What do you mean, upside down? Stuff turned over, drawers pulled out. Looks like a struggle. Now, listen, I'll probably need your help. Well, it's a novelty for you. I thought you always wanted me... Wait a minute, Johnson. Somebody's here. I just... Well, who are you? What's it to you, bud? Where's Miss Brooks? Miss who? You know who I mean, the girl who lives here. Sorry, bud. Don't know who lives here. Just come in to fix the plumbing. Oh, yeah? Well, now you listen, Buster... You're no plumber, and you're going to tell me what happened here. I don't get excited, mister. I finished my job, and I'm getting on. That's what you think. First, you're going to tell me what went on in this apartment and what you're doing here. I got news for you, bud. I said I'm going, and I am. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, you want to play it the hard way, huh? Okay, you ask. Oh, Oh. Valentine. Valentine, what's going on up there? Valentine! All right, Valentine, I follow you so far. Somebody managed to get a necklace in with Miss Brooks's shop. Oh, I, I thought it was a gag, Johnson, a fake. But when Mo told me it was real, I, I came right back up here to her apartment. She was gone. You can see for yourself how the place looks. Yeah, yeah, somebody made a shambles of it, all right. Now, look, Johnson, the way I figure, whoever put that thing in with her packages came here for it. She told them she didn't have it, which she didn't. I did. They didn't believe her. So one of them dragged her out while the other one combed the apartment for it. Oh, you think there might have been two of them? Naturally. Somebody had to grab Miss Brooks. Somebody else had to tap you on the head. Well, he didn't have to, but he did, Johnson. Now, I gotta find Brooksy, and I don't know where to begin. I could make a suggestion. Well, come on. What's stopping you? You might start by getting a line on who put the necklace in with her packages. Must tie up some way. Oh, yeah. Sounds easy. How? Where'd she buy the stuff? How do I know she... Hey, wait a minute. Coverly, she said. Coverly's department store. All right, they've got a jewelry department, a good one. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. By the way, I suppose this mug got the necklace. Hey, wait a minute. I had it in this pocket. Yeah, here it is. 
Guess he didn't think I'd have anything to do with it. Okay, then. Straighten your tie and get down to Coverly. See what you can find out. Can't you come along? Valentine, it happens I'm in homicide, not the robbery detail. I gotta get back to work. If you need any help, give me a call. Good luck. <laughs> Uh, Mr. DeSalle? Oh, yes, sir. May I help you? You're in charge of the jewelry department here? Yes, yes, that's right. Okay, now tell me. Do you have a diamond and emerald necklace in stock with five emeralds worth around $20,000? Uh, yes. Yes, we did have a necklace such as you described until yesterday. That's what I thought. It was stolen, huh? Stolen? <laughs> but, of course, not... Uh... Look, Sal, you don't have to be cagey with me. My name's Valentine. I'm working with the police. Oh, I'm happy to know you, Mr. Valentine, but I... I... know you're covered by insurance, but... What was it, a holdup? Got a description of the man who took it? <laughs> of course we have a description of the man who took it. You see, the necklace you have in mind was not stolen. It was sold yesterday. Sold? That's right. Oh. Well, is this it? Hmm. Let me see. Uh, Mr. Valentine, where did you get this necklace? It's the same one. It is? But you haven't told Where me... Where I got it? it, I found it. Oh? And what made you think it came from Coverley's? Because there was a Coverley's label on the box. At least I'm glad it wasn't stolen. That's a help. I should think it would be. Oh, Skip it. You don't understand. Now, what I want to do is find the owner. Who bought it? Uh, perhaps we could return it. Yeah, and perhaps you couldn't. All because of this thing, a girl... Who bought it? A gentleman by the name of Guy Farrell. Guy... You mean Slick Farrell, a big gambler? I believe he is known as a gambling operator, yes. Well, that puts a different light on the whole thing. Oh, it does? Yeah, it does. Now maybe I can find a missing girl and clear up this whole mess. Thanks to Sal. Uh, just a moment, young Call uh, Farrell on the phone in half an hour. He'll tell you he's got his necklace. <laughs> This is Mr. Farrell's residence? That's right. I'd like to see him, please. Well, I'm afraid Mr. Farrell's busy. I see. Well, if you don't mind, I'll wait. My name is Valentine. How do you do, Mr. Valentine? I'm Mrs. Farrell. Oh. Your husband is busy, you say? Well, I'm not sure, but I think so. A man came to see him, and they went into his study. I've been upstairs, so I don't know whether he left or not. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, would you mind finding out? Not at all. That is... What was it you wanted to see my husband about? Well, I, I have something for him, that's all. Uh, something that he lost, I believe. And your name is Valentine? Yeah, that's right. But he wouldn't know the name. I just uh, found this thing and traced it to him. I'm sure he'd like to have it back. Oh. Well, all right, Mr. Valentine. I'll see if his call is still with him. His study's right here. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, Guy. Guy, you still busy, dear? There's a man who has something. Guy. No! Mrs. Farrell, what's the matter? No! What's the trouble, Mrs. Farrell? Hey, look. Is, is that your husband? Yes, yes, it oh, is. Wait a minute, easy, easy, I'll see. Mrs. Farrell. Yes, yes, I what? think you'd better go out for now. Oh, no, you mean it. Yes, yes, I'll have to use the phone. Oh, no, no. Johnson speaking. Johnson, this is George Valentine. Yeah, Valentine. Any luck? No, but you told me to call you if I needed help. I'm out at Guy Farrell's place. You better get here right away. Guy Farrell's? What's up? I got a job for you now, Johnson. Farrell's been murdered. Just a moment, we'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. I don't have to tell you that the holidays are almost here. If you're like most of us, you're scurrying around all over the town doing the 101 things that need to be done in getting ready for Christmas and New Year's. What's that got to do with automobiles? Well, I'll tell you. The kind of driving you do when you're Christmas shopping is the kind of driving you do all year round. Stop and go. Stop and go. Technically, it's called cold operation. And scientists know it's the hardest kind of driving for a car. New RPM motor oil solves this problem for hundreds of thousands of Western motorists 
because it more than meets the heavy-duty motor oil requirements of all automobile manufacturers. In fact, new RPM doubles engine life between major overhauls due to lubrication. Compared with premium-type oils, as designated by the American Petroleum Institute, new RPM cuts in half the wear rate of critical engine parts. Yes, new RPM motor oil, the oil developed through atomic energy, protects your car during stop-and-go cold operation, the time when your car needs protection most. Be sure you get new RPM motor oil for your car at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. You're sent for, not by a prospective client, but by your own secretary. She has a problem, which you laugh off for the moment. But you can't laugh off the fact that she was sent a valuable necklace along with her shopping, or that the man who bought it and smuggled it in with her order was a big-time gambler who is now dead, or that Brooksy herself is missing. If your name is George Valentine, you know that finding Farrell's murderer will mean finding Brooksy, or vice versa. With Lieutenant Johnson at the Farrell home. Miss Farrell, you say you haven't the least idea who your husband's caller was? Not the slightest, Lieutenant Johnson. But uh, you showed the man in, and your husband apparently knew him. Oh, yes, yes, he knew him, Mr. Valentine. I'm sure of that. Because when he saw him, he called him my name. Oh, it's something. What name? It was Gus. He called him Gus. Uh-huh. No last name, of course. No. No, that's all he said. Just, hello, Gus. Well, did your husband seem glad to see this, Gus? Well, now that you mention it, I don't believe he did. He he seemed a little upset. You'd know the man if you saw him again, of course. Oh, yes, certainly. He was short and stocky, very dark hair, black, I believe, and he had a, a mole or something on his, on his left cheek. Hey, Johnson, that's my man. That's my man, Valentine. Only I don't happen to know who he is. No, no, I mean, that's the mug who knocked me over the head in Brooksy's apartment. Answers the description perfectly. Yeah, 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 that's great. Only you don't happen to know who he is either. Uh, Miss Farrell. Yes, Lieutenant. Suppose you go on about whatever you have to do, Mr. Valentine, and I'll look around here a bit before we go. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Please call me if I could be of any help. We'll speak to you on the way out, Miss Farrell. Johnson, Johnson, don't you see this all ties up? Yeah, yeah. How? The necklace, Brooksy, Farrell's murder, everything. All right. What's your theory? All right. Farrell bought the necklace, probably as a present for his wife. That we know. Sure, sure. Go ahead. As he took it away, he saw a mug named Gus watching him. He knew the guy. Knew that if he tried to take it home with him, he'd be held up and robbed. So he quick figured out something. He went back to the shipping room and had someone put it in with Brooksy's order. That makes sense, but... But it... this Gus followed him and saw what he was doing. All he had to do was get to Brooksy first. Which he apparently did. Yeah. When she told him she didn't have it, he didn't believe her. So he had an accomplice take her away and scoured the apartment for it. When he didn't find it, he came here. Figured Farrell had already picked it up. Look, Valentine, I believe all you say, but we still got a couple of question marks. This mug Gus and his pal... Yeah, well, don't forget, I got a big question mark, too, Brooksy. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Well, all I can do is go back to headquarters and pull out the pictures of every mug named Gus... You and Mrs. Farrell can look at him. Johnson, and... I gotta cancel out those question marks faster. And I got a way to do it. Yeah, huh? Farrell obviously knew who Brooksy was. He said in his note he knew she worked with me. So? So he knew. But nine chances in ten, Gus and his friends didn't. Still don't. George Valentine wouldn't mean a thing to them. That's getting us somewhere? I think it will. Suppose they find out that a certain diamond and emerald necklace was lost, found by George Valentine, and he's trying to locate the owner. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. But how'd you go about fixing it so they don't? That's the easy part. Johnson, I gotta get Brooksy back, and you gotta get a murderer. I think we can do both at the same time. But, Chief, that was just a plain accident. I'm a reporter. I don't miss stuff. I checked on it, I tell you. Yeah, yeah, I know. Huh? Okay, Chief, I'll cover it. That guy's off his rocket. Well, George, what's on your mind, if any? Look, Hank, I found a diamond and emerald necklace. Oh, great. I never have that kind of luck. It's worth $20,000. Better still, tell you what to do. Turn it over to the police. Nobody claims it in 30 days, it's yours. Will you settle down for a minute? 
Just because of this necklace, my girl's disappeared and a man has been murdered. Well, that makes quite a... Huh? Yeah, now listen. I want you to do something for sure, me. Sure, George. Glad to. Find the murderer or your girl? I'll find both of them and give you the exclusive story, but you got to do something first. Okay, such as... I didn't find the necklace, Hank, but the guys I'm after don't know it. I want them to think I did. And how do you do that? Well, that's where you come in. I want you to write a story for your paper about how a George Valentine found a valuable diamond and emerald necklace. Get him to stick it on the front page. You've got him. Sure, but... I'll give you a description of the necklace and my telephone number. Now, remember, your story says that I want a, a way to return it to the owner. Now, sit down at that typewriter and get to work. Get your paper, Clarence. Man finds diamond necklace. Read all about it. Hey, boy, boy. Yes, sir, paper. Uh, what's that headline you were calling? Mm. What do you mean, mister? That uh, diamond necklace thing. What is it? Yeah, ain't that something, boss? Guy found a diamond and emerald necklace worth $20,000, it says. Yeah? What do you know about that? What's his name? Fellow by the name of... Hey, what are you, a cheapskate? You want to read about it, you buy a paper. See, I got to make a living, you know. All right, okay, sure. How much? Seven cents, mister. Yeah, it's a dime. Keep the change. Well, thanks. A fellow by the name of Valentine found it. Story even gives his telephone number. <laughs> Valentine. Sounds like a phony name to me. Valentine. Okay, Johnson, you wanted to see me. Why? Well, I see by the paper you found a necklace. Look, Johnson, is that the reason you got me down to headquarters? You could have told me that on the phone. No, no, no. Keep your shirt on. I know that was a gag to smoke out the guys that ran off with Miss Brooks. And a gag to get your murderer. Maybe we've uh, got a little bit ahead of you, Valentine. I got you in to show you a picture. Yeah? Yeah. Wasn't exactly necessary. I showed it to Mrs. Farrell, and, well, she'd made the identification, all right. Just wanted to double check. Okay, okay. Where's the picture? Here, here, here. Recognize the character? Yeah. That's the guy that conked me in Brooksy's apartment. Who is he? Mug by the name of Gus Scully, Carmen Hoodlum, second story man, two bit gambler, long record. You got him? Well, uh, no. Uh, no, he doesn't seem to be sticking around his regular hunts. But we'll catch up with him. Don't worry. Oh, yeah, sure. I suppose you will. But if my hunch is any good, I'll catch up with him first. Yeah. How? Because of that story you saw in the paper, that's how. And right now, you're keeping me away from the phone. And by the way, Johnson... Well? Don't get me down here again unless you've got something. I'm going to be busy finding my girl. All right, sister, you know what to do. Tell this Valentine just what I said, and you won't get in any trouble. Yes, I know. Okay, go ahead, call the number. Now? Yeah, now. Don't try any funny business, sister. Tell him just what I said and nothing more. Then, will you let me go? When I get the necklace, sure, why not? Hello? Oh, uh, hello. Is this Mr. Valentine? The Mr. Valentine who found a necklace? That's right. Brooksy. Brooksy, where are you? Are you all right? Is that the right guy? Yes, he's the one. Oh, thank heaven I got you, Mr. Valentine. I'm the one who lost the necklace. I bought it at Coverly's. Their label was on the box. Brooksy, tell me, can't you talk? Is somebody with you? Oh, yes, sir, that's right. Can't you tell me something, Angel? Yes, a diamond necklace with emeralds. That's right. Do you have it with you now? Sure, right here in my pocket. Now look, Brooksy, I'll give anybody the necklace to get you back. Oh, that's very thoughtful of you. I appreciate look, it. Look, look, what does he say? Uh, just a minute, Mr. Valentine. He says he didn't want to leave it around his house, so he put it in a safety deposit box. You did say it's in your safety deposit box, didn't you, Mr. Valentine? I get it, sure, sure. But, Brooksy, watch your step. That guy with you isn't just a mug. He's a murderer, too. Oh. Well, where can I come and get it? And when? I got a paper. I'll put down the address. Right now, Angel. Any time, just so I get you back. That's all. Oh. Oh, I see. Uh, just a moment, Mr. Valentine. He says he absolutely won't let me come and get it. He insists on bringing it to me. He likes my voice, and he wants to meet me. Oh, nuts. Well, all right. Tell him to meet you, wait a minute, and see, in Grinnell Park, a quarter of a mile inside the Duran Street entrance at uh, 10 o'clock tonight. 
If I do, will you let me go? Sure, sure. Tell him. Mr. Valentine. Yeah, yeah, Brooksy. You, uh, you sound very nice to me, too. I'll meet you in Grinnell Park at 10 tonight. I'll park my car about a quarter of a mile inside the Duran Street entrance. Good. Will they bring you? Oh, yes. I- I'm sure of it. And you can't miss my car. It's a... Uh, light blue convertible. Light blue convertible. I'll be there, Rachel. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Valentine. Well, I'd be glad to see you. Okay, mister, stop right there. What? Who's that? Me, bud. Give me that necklace. Well, uh, uh, what necklace? You know what I'm talking about, bud. Your name's Valentine, ain't it? Why, uh, uh, yes, yes, that's my name, okay, but... Okay, hand over the necklace. But uh, well, it's so dark here, I, I can't see you. Who are you? None of your business. Give me that necklace. Oh, no, 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 indeed. No, I won't. I'm delivering the necklace to a very nice young lady who called me on the phone. Where is she? Up there in that car. She didn't want to get out on such a dark night, see? So she asked me to get it for her. Then I'll go to her. She had a very nice voice. She was a lady, I'm sure. And I'm also sure that you're no gentleman. Oh, you think so, huh? Well, suppose I ain't. You got a necklace on you, and I want it, see? Well, you're not going to get it. No, indeed. The lady Give said... Give it to me. Huh? What are you doing? What's that? That jerker was a gun right in your ribs. A gun that shoots bullets. Now, get it. A gun? Oh, well, good heavens. I, I wouldn't want you to shoot me. Hey, let, let go, my arm. Let go. Drop let go. that gun. What's the idea? Stop drifting my arm. Drop that gun. Ah! That's better, friend. Yeah, that's what you think. Oh, yeah. Oh. No! Stay where you are, Angel. Did the double cross her. Oh, yeah, that's right. Away. That dame was crooked. She kicked me. You're going to be crooked, too, as soon as I find your feet. Oh. George, are you all right? Yeah, Brooksy. Be right there. Oh, Johnson. George, he almost killed you. Or vice versa, Johnson. Okay, okay, Valentine. You waited long enough to call. What are you trying to do, run a one-man war? It worked, didn't it? There's your killer, Johnson. He'll tell you about his accomplice. Yeah. And you better pick up his gun, too. The boys might need it to hang that murderer on him. George, how did you ever know he was a murderer? I'll explain the whole thing in a few minutes, Brooksy. Oh, let's get out of here and have a cup of coffee. If you're planning to drive home for the holidays, then here's an important reminder. You'll find independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West ready and waiting to serve you with friendly, courteous service, top quality products, and spotless restrooms. Car savers are particularly proud of their spank and clean restrooms and make it their business to keep them well scrubbed. Stop in during your holiday trip at any standard station or independent Chevron gas station where they say and mean we take better care of your car. George. Angel. I think you're terrific. Mm, good coffee. You do? Why? Well, because you caught a murderer all by yourself with no help at all from Lieutenant Johnson. No, that was nothing. Nothing? No, it just happened that way. I wasn't really interested in catching a murderer. All I wanted to do was to get you back. Oh, darling, you did? Naturally. George, you're sweet. I had to get you back, Angel. You did? Sure, all those letters I dictated have to go out by tomorrow. Oh. And I can't read your shorthand. Oh, George! Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey has starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It was written by Lloyd London and directed by Kenneth Webb. Ken Christie was heard as Lieutenant Johnson, Joe Forte as Moe, Ted DeCorsia as Scully, Lois Corbett as Mrs. Farrell, and Parley Bear as DeSalle. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. 
Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. Let George Do It is heard overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.